Thank you very much. Um, it's a nasty job to give me to have to give five minutes to talk about all of this. So it's far too interesting and too much to do that justice. So um, I will just try and say a few very, very short, small things. And the first is that I think that these books, I'm only talking about these two, um, but those in themselves as well as the others, they really do represent a kind of you know, really, really big, substantial body of work and, and, and a major advance. I think it's kind of worth emphasizing that, that if one is interested in inequality, as most people are in one way or another, it's been a problem for research on conflict, actually. And people haven't quite known how to deal with it. And one reason is that they've either gone down a, a straightforwardly what, what, what Francis calls vertical inequality route, where the data don't really tell us clear enough stories, so one has to kind of dig a bit further. It's not that it's irrelevant always, but one doesn't quite know how. Or there's maybe one subset of what we're calling here horizontal inequalities, which is just to say, well, it's all about ethnic uh, difference and so on and so forth. And this work is really, really going beyond both of those things. It's much more subtle and, 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 and more thorough. So <coughs> really, really welcome it. And also, the, as you've heard, it's animated by an interest in policy relevance, and that's not to be underestimated, even though I might question that a little bit in a minute. Um, so in terms of the two that I, that I was asked to, to look at, I think what is, I mean, Francis already said this, but they work rather nicely together because the, 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 the original one, the horizontal inequalities and, and conflict one, is more at the kind of structural level and, and, and macro level, whereas Ivan, the unpronounceable um, <laughs> book, uh, is much, much more um, uh, mi micro level thing. So they work really, really nicely together. Um, but a, a couple of things I'd want to sort of pull out maybe in, in, in each of them. And on the first one, um, this is a, a, a question, it may be answered, I'm not quite sure. Is I think there's a bit of a tension within the, the book between, on the one hand, this um, idea that there is confirmation for the hypothesis that where there's you know, um, consistent economic and political horizontal inequalities, there's a much greater likelihood statistically of, of, of violent conflict. And on the other hand, the, f the, the acknowledgement that there's extraordinary durability of horizontal inequality, not always accompanied by violent conflict. How, how do we put those together is, a, is, is an issue. And it, and it takes me, you know, is there a paradox there or is it perfectly neatly explained and so on? And that takes me to another issue, which is, uh, and Francis knows, I've always kind of sort of seen a conversation between the, the, the horizontal inequality approach and Charles Tilley's uh, approach, which, where he kind of talked about something very, very similar, but in slightly different ways and different words. And he, he, he called it categorical inequality in a way. Now, interestingly, looking again at this book um, recently, I see that there's a mention of Tilly having three mechanisms. Actually, there were four in Tilly's book, but it says three, and it calls them hoarding, emulation, and discrimination. Well, Tilly's were, in fact, hoarding, emulation, adaptation, and not discrimination, but exploitation. And I wonder whether that's significant, in a way, um, because, and this comes back to the, possibly the relationship between the vertical and the horizontal, rather than an either or. Uh, because we can see horizontal inequalities in terms of differences. Those people in that part of the country don't have you know, the same access as those people or whatever. Or is there a tighter relationship between the two? One in which one group is actually extracting surplus value from another, so on and so forth. That may be re more salient in some of these cases than in others. And again, it's, so it's a question about not so much difference as relations, institutionalized and so on and so forth. Uh, and the closest you get in a way in this book is, is really touching on the idea of the legacy of a colonial division of labor that I would want to see in a way more about the kind of more recent political economy of accumulation and, and, and so on. Um, there's a policy thing, but I'll come back to that in a, in a second and just sort of pick up one thing. You know, if you read Ivan's book, there are there are three really simple, really important things that it does. And, and this was new to me, this book, and I think it's very exciting and, and, and as, as well and really, really interesting. It emphasizes agency. That's important. It confirms Libby Wood's you know, work on the pleasure of agency and conflicts and so on and so forth. 
It emphasizes, this is even more important, variation in people's motivations. Um, so you cannot just, the evidence in this book, I think pretty convincingly shows and confirms other work, you can't just read off from some abstract deductive principle or axiom what people's motivations are. They vary hugely um, within societies, across individuals, so on. But the third thing is this very interesting work on the interaction between individuals' motivations and organizations, what they would call at some points violent collectives, and so on and so forth. Often not so much structural as very situational, and that's really, really interesting. And it's, it makes for a very, very subtle and, and open analytical approach. Um, so you can't just reduce people's motivations and behavior and choices to initial conditions, resource endowments, so on and so forth. <coughs> and, I, and I was loving this book until virtually the last paragraphs when I, you know, I bulked. And there's a, if I've got time to just do this, there's a, there's a thing where it kind of, at the end, it throws out this new idea. Well, hang on a minute. In Latin America, uh, violent collectives are ideological, they're political. In Africa, they're opportunist and apolitical, and, and uh, you know, Joe's probably going to be very upset about this. <laughs> so I wondered, hang on a minute, this is overdoing the, the over-aggregation and, 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 and the lack of subtlety. And I thought, well, you know, maybe if one challenges it, one looks rather naive if one says, well, surely ideas and politics were important for quite a long time to the ANC, to Frelimo even, it may have changed. Mm -hmm. But why did it change? Well, you know, it was durable in a different way for quite a long time. And then I thought, well, there are things like the TPLF in Ethiopia, an extraordinary organization, yeah. remains very, very kind of shaped by a vision. Uh, yes, there are some personal interests and so on and so forth, but it's, you know, it is really committed to, to some different institutions and long-run visions. So that really, really bothered me, and I wondered what was the purpose of, of putting that in there. And the last thing I think I've got time to say is, comes back to policy. It's brilliant that these books you know, they glance towards. I suppose we had years of encouraging Diffid and others to, th to be conflict sensitive. Now I think the idea is to make them also horizontally inequality sensitive, if, if, if you like. But, but what does that mean? It's very easy to recommend a range of policies. You say, this would work nicely, this would work nicely. But in reality, is th are there two sad conclusions from this work? And one is um, the sad conclusion that however much we dislike socioeconomic inequalities, really all you need is an elite bargain. You know, if the politics at the top is sorted, you know, nobody's mobilizing anybody, so they're unhappy, but, okay, is that the conclusion of this work? And the other is, who's it really for? When, when do these policies become relevant unless you've already been through the horror of the, of the conflict? Can you just go around and say, this would be a nice thing to do, please do it? No. There are reasons why there are these horizontal inequalities persisting. So I leave those as, as questions, and I hope I haven't run over my, my time. Okay. Um, admirable, admirable to fit, fil, f fit some subtlety into uh, five minutes reviewing two books, but that was really challenging and interesting. Many thanks.